Today we're looking at a 310 Martini Cadet that belongs to a uh, member of uh, my shooting club uh, and he feels that the trigger pull is uh, very heavy. Um, so I said that I'd have a look at it for him. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at it. We'll, com we'll compare it to the trigger pull on my Cadet. Then we'll disassemble it and see what we can find inside and if there's an obvious reason for a heavy trigger pull and we'll do what we can to reduce it. So let's have a bit of a closer look at this cadet. Um, this one is a New South Wales. This is New South Wales marked. Um, BSA made, you can tell by the side that it's a BSA. So BSA markings come with of Australia, all the typical markings. So just like when you're working on the trigger of any firearm, what I do before I do anything is just take a bit of time, don't try to be in a rush, and just get straight in your mind the geometry of the fire control mechanism, how the sear um, engages with the, what you'd call the tumbler, I guess, in a British... British firearm so let's have a look at this so there's the extractor so you can forget about that it's nothing to do with firing the gun uh, and then this here is the um, this is the cocking indicator so again you can forget about that um, and so if you look at this so this is the, the in this configuration the action's closed. You can see the firing pins protruding from the breech block, breech face, uh, and the firing pins down. Now, if we go like that, so we've opened the gun now, so the chamber is now going to be up here. You have access to the chamber. Um, and as you can see, as we push, as we push down, it actually pushes down on the extractor there and causes that to tip backwards and extract the case uh, but the other, but the thing to watch is and let's just I'll just decock that again thing to watch is just in here let's get a uh, a pointer so just here so you can see you've got the trigger with its associated sear on there one thing I do notice that's a reasonably heavy trigger, a heavy spring in that trigger. So, so that may be going towards the um, making the trigger pull heavier than it needs to be. Um, so we've got this flat sear surface here, and as we cock it, you'll see that the as the block comes down, you see this camming surface pushes the tumbler backwards, cocks the hand, so it pulls the firing pin backwards, and then you'll see that that notch in the tumbler has been caught by the sear. So if we close the action again, we've now got this in a spring-loaded condition, where that's caught there, the firing pins under is backward under spring press tension um, and the trigger's held there so I'm not going to fire this now well actually what we can do is actually I'll just get a piece of brass get a brass thing and we'll just put that there to absorb the firing pin strike so let's watch this fire You can even see the firing pin strike at the end of that brass there. All right, so so what we've got to do is say, okay, what can we do to lighten this trigger pull? Now we don't want to change any geometry in this case. I have had other um, rifles. If you look at my video of 
lighten the trigger pull on a Savage Model 3B single shot 22. The actual, it's just, it's always a bit tricky this. So if we bring that up, okay, so we haven't quite caught the sear there, but you'll see, I'll see if we can get it so you can see the light. So you can see that little notch, it's almost there. If we look closely at that little notch, it's pretty much 90 degrees. So we haven't got, there we go, that just caught then. In that Savage 3B, the actual notch, like if this notch had actually had some upward angle, so it was having to overcome spring tension to fire, overcome the, the spring tension of the, of the firing pin to fire, um, you can actually file it, and, but that angle should never be more than 90 degrees um, because that would create an unsafe condition. It has to be such that the trigger, pulling the sear of the trigger there, oops, um, the sear is actually moving at 90 degrees to the notch. If it's less than 90 degrees, then it's actually working against the spring and you know, heavy trigger pull. But if it's more than 90 degrees, you can actually have an unsafe condition um, <clears throat> because if it was, if the, if the angle was on this angle, like as you can imagine, any knock could tend to make the, uh, the sear slide out of its notch. So as far as I can see with this rifle, just as far as planning goes what I'm going to do I'm going to disassemble it what I'm going to do first is that top surface of the sear I'm going to polish that it's reasonably polished now when I look at it but polish that without removing any metal just polish it to a fine mirror finish and uh, and then the same on that notch on the tumbler. We'll get in there with a with an Arkansas stone with a with a ninety degree corner on it, and just carefully polish that. So so you got two polished surfaces working together. We'll see how that goes. And while I'm at it, I'll have a look at this trigger spring because that. That's reasonably heavy, and I wonder whether just replacing that spring, I think this is a leaf spring, so um, it'll probably mean making another one, but replacing that with a lighter spring may actually reduce the trigger pull as well. So anyway, let's go ahead and pull this apart. So the first thing we do, actually, you can see already the... Um, This is falling out, this uh, pin here. So if we pull this out. There's the ejector. That was pretty easy. There we go, it's actually under slight tension then, spring tension. Okay, we're going to have to take the uh, other pins out first, I think. Get a bigger, bigger punch. All right, I'll just punch that out there. It actually came out a lot easier than I thought it was going to be, to be honest. Okay, so punch that out and we'll punch this one here out. So all of these pins, are, none of them are particularly tight, um, but they probably don't need to be really. 
So um, let's have a look at those. It's <coughs> those two look like they're the same. There we go. So where are we here? So the block came up. So you can see the firing pin and that little uh, tail of the of the um, tumbler goes up into the firing pin. So we'll have another. We'll look at that block in a minute. So there's the tumbler. I think that just comes out of there from memory. I think this is just a little split pin. It looks like a screw, but I think it's actually a spring-loaded split pin. But anyway, we can probably leave that intact. We don't need to make in case we break something. Um, the lever will come out like that. All right, could do with a bit of clean. You can see it's full of dirt and powder. And there's the spring. There's the actual trigger spring there. Oh, that's not actually because the trigger's actually now. Um, now loose because I've taken the screw out, but um, probably what we'll do when we put it back together would make it easier is we'll put that screw in and then we'll then screw the, the trigger on, uh, the trigger spring on. So we'll just get it the appropriate screwdriver. Get a bit and we'll take that spring out. I just needed to make sure I didn't wreck this screw while I was taking it out because it was quite tight but anyway I got it out so we'll unscrew that and pull that spring out you can see that spring is a really quite a tight fit in there um, and it's quite a Well, it's not, I mean, it's not really complex, I suppose, but um, it's got that little round bit there. So I'm not going to do anything to this spring here, you know, as original spring and whatever. But if I can't get this trigger pull reduced, one thing I might need to think about doing is reproducing this spring it shouldn't be too hard to reproduce but make a thinner one make a really weak one um, because you know this is basically used as a target rifle now so it can have a lot lighter trigger pull than um, than you'd expect in a um, cadet but yeah my my trigger pull is only half of what this is so um, but what I'll probably do is I'll, I'll polish the sear surfaces first and then um, and then I will um, put it back together and try it and if it still just seems to be too heavy especially compared to mine I might muck around with a spring all right so <coughs> I didn't actually film it was a pretty straightforward but I actually took the trigger sear and the tumbler out and using an Arkansas stone, here's my Arkansas stone, um, and then some fine grit sandpaper, I had 600 and then a thousand. Um, I polished the end of the sear to a mirror finish and then I also polished the, um, the little groove, the little um, notch in the, on the tumbler, which the sear engages in, I polished them smooth so that's all we can really do to the sears uh, to the sear surfaces we're not going to change any anything or take any metal or do anything else because um, there's nothing to be gained by that and it's just going to make it dangerous um, so what i'm going to do now is I've, I've put those back in as you can see the pins falling out uh, i've put those back together um, 
putting the trigger in I actually put the trigger in and put the screw in first while there was no spring tension and I then put the spring on top which is what I should have done when I was pulling it apart um, so um, so there's that so what I'm going to do now is um, my, while I'm here before I put it back together I'll just pull you can see it's a bit kind of grotty this the firing pin and everything so what I'm going to do is um, pull it apart so basically we just pull out the retaining screw then that big plug unplugs and then the firing pin and firing pin spring comes out and we can clean all the crud out of there so there we have it there's the firing pin uh, firing pin spring I've pulled it out of the breech block there so we can clean that hole out there's the little screw little tiny retaining screw you gotta be careful with that's got a very fine thread on it so we have to be really gentle with that when we put it back in make sure the threads are clean and there's the little retaining retaining uh, bit at the back that just holds the whole thing together so um, I'm just going to go and give all that a good clean and grease Now you'll note that our firing pin, the little slot in it, has gone crooked as we've screwed this in and I've just realised, I wondered why there was a a screwdriver slot in the end of the, uh, of the firing pin and that's obviously why, so that you can then get this and turn it around like so so that we've got that slot showing in there because that then goes in there I think what we might need to do is <laughs> put the top part in first. All right, so you know, I, I just did this off camera because it wasn't that difficult. It's just a matter of 
trying to hold things together and get the pins in and use three hands. Um, but anyway, I've got, so that's all, um, all back together again, cleaned out and lubricated. Uh, I've done that sphere. So, um, so we'll put that back together again now. That pins come out a bit. Get all the pins in straight. Let's put a bit of oil in there. Make sure the extractor's all the way back. Okay. Make sure that extractor's back. Okay, it's quite tight. This, so I might just. Down. This touch more. an improvement um, now this is not cocked at the moment if I pull that trigger I can pull it a little bit just against the hammer spring it's actually the trigger itself is still quite heavy pulling against that spring is heavy so you know when you when you're lining up and starting to pull your initial you're initially pulling against that spring which gives gives a bit of a feeling of heaviness um, now the only way to do that uh, I showed you that spring in the video is um, is to actually manufacture another spring of the same dimensions just to make it lighter, thinner. Uh, you see it had a little waste in it, the spring would make that waste slightly longer just to reduce the actual um, force of the spring and just make the initial against the spring pull of the trigger a bit lighter. But um, uh, the, the actual fellow who owns this is coming to pick it up shortly so I'm going to show it to him and he can take it and then probably have it for shoot, see what he thinks and I'll say to him, look, if you want it lighter, you can give it back to me and I'll make another spring for you. But anyway, um, yeah, so if we just cock it, if I pick a, a point over there. So it's not heavy enough to spoil my aim, you know, I think the, the, the seat is breaking while I'm on target. So I think that's not too bad. And I haven't fired enough other cadets to know what the normal is, really. Um, it's just funny that mine, someone may have mucked around with my trigger at some stage in the distant past. Or it may be just that when they were manufactured and they're making those springs, um, they, um, because the springs were probably stamped out, I'd say, stamped out of spring steel and then finished by hand and then, you know, heat treated. So it could be that there's a lot of variation between the hammer springs as well. Um, but uh, there's definitely some improvement. I've, I've, I've created some improvement and I think the two reasons for that are one is just pulling the action apart, cleaning all the crap out of it uh, and oiling it so that everything's moving smoothly. Uh, and then of course stoning the sear surfaces so that they're mirror smooth. Um, I did note on the, on the, on the sear because only about half of the, the actual sear, the top of the sear on the trigger is a rectangular thing. And only about a half of that sear is actually engaged with the notch in the tumbler. Uh, and you could see, once I took it out and, and wiped it, you could actually see the slight wear where, where, the, where the, the two surfaces has, had been interacting together. So by staining that, I took that away. So the whole thing was just mirror smooth again. So. So yeah, I'm reasonably happy with what we've, what we've achieved. So anyway, if you like this sort of thing, please subscribe to my channel and push, push like. 
and until next time, thanks for watching.